essentially the message that I want to put over to you tonight is that the patent system isn't working the way it should be. We're not talking about stopping the patenting of something someone invented. You know, and we're not talking about stopping the innovation system. We're not threatening to stop the innovation system. But the problem is the moment anyone dares to question what is currently going on in terms of the patenting of biological materials and seeds are biological materials, is anyone, does anyone actually think that seeds are something anyone invented? Can you please put your hands up? Did anyone invent genes? If you think that, please put your hands up. A protein that exists in, in nature. I, I, look, this is, I'm not going to criticise you. If, you. if you really believe that, put your hand up. Well, the fact of the matter is that if you did put your hand up, you would be with the majority of people. You would think, because the majority of lawyers uh, believe that an isolated biological material, a gene or a protein, a seed, is something that should be patentable. Um, a lot of senators in the, in the federal Senate seem to be concerned that if they dare to pass a law which actually might recalibrate the patent system into what it should be about, that somehow it would be the end of the biotechnology industry. Um, the University of Sydney, right here, actually filed a submission to the Senate and said, we don't like the legislation that has been put before the parliament because we think it's bad for business. The University of Sydney right here, and not only the University of Sydney, every Sandstone University filed a submission against the bill. And not only the Sandstone Universities, but the Australian Academy of Science said, oh, hang on a sec, we're, we're a little bit nervous that this could lead to unintended consequences, you know? It might interfere with progress. Well, I'll tell you what will interfere with progress and your bellies and your, and your access to medicines is the patent system, ladies and gentlemen. The patent system. It is out of control and it is basically being misused by people in order to achieve and get a monopoly on things that they have no entitlement to. No one invented a gene, whether it's a plant gene, whether it's an animal gene, or whether it's a human gene. And re simply removing that gene from its natural environment, which is all, it's all these people are claiming, they say that an isolated gene is an artificial construct and it has economic value, they're saying that that justifies the grant of gene patents. You know, um, the Intellectual Property Law Association, the United States Intellectual Property Law Association, actually filed a submission to the Senate in relation to the legislation that I'm talking about. Legislation which, if you were not aware of, is probably not going to make it through the parliament because of the mass of opposition to it. Now that's really sad because the majority of people say that this is the sort of thing that's common sense that should get through. But it's probably not going to get through, ladies and gentlemen, because the lawyers have said that this is a bad thing. The scientists have said that this is a bad thing. The engineers have said that this is a bad thing. The corporations that have patents on all of these things say it's a bad thing. And what's left? What's left is actually a few individuals like myself here pro bono, who are doing these things for free, we're not getting paid to do it, who are having to fight armies of lawyers who are well-funded and have no scruples. Now, I'm not making this up, ladies and gentlemen. I have been doing this now for 11 years. I have been trying to get this message across, and it has been extremely difficult because the moment I get up, I am classified as a dangerous person, someone who is trying to destroy the progress of science. I am a Luddite. But for people like Peter, who are on the land, who have to deal with this, the consequences of these very complex agreements, written by very smart and very well-paid lawyers, who have to, who have to deal with patents granted by patent officers who are paid for by us to do a specific job. That is, 
to actually negotiate a patent on the basis of an invention and who are granting patents when there is no invention, these, these people who are farmers have to deal with this. How, it is overwhelming. The fact that Peter here is part of 89 plaintiffs bringing this action is a credit to this man and he should be congratulated because it is extremely risky to bring litigation. doesn't matter whether it's in the United States or here. And Peter Cashman over there, who you're going to hear of in a minute, he's a, he's a barrister but a professor here. And again, there's an action being brought in the federal court in Australia right here and now, and Peter will tell you about that case, to challenge the validity of human patents over a gene that is linked to breast cancer. Now, if you would think of a I couldn't think of anything worse, actually, than to have invented a genetic mutation that's linked to breast cancer. I wouldn't have thought that was safe. Where's the usefulness and the utility of inventing a genetic mutation that is going to give a woman breast cancer or ovarian cancer? And yet the Australian Patent Office says, oh, that's just fine because they've isolated the gene. Well, that's what this is really all about. It is about bringing common sense back into the equation, ladies and gentlemen. Farmers, whether it's farmers, whether it's scientists, whether it's cancer researchers, at the end of the day, there is a line. And either you have an invention or you don't. And the majority of these patents are not about inventions. They are about greed. They are about obtaining a monopoly under false pretenses. And they are about ripping off the economy because that's what it means. It means that it through the use of a monopoly, they have the right to, to, to demand money they wouldn't normally be entitled to. And the whole system, the patent office, the politicians, the lawyers, the whole system isn't working. Now, unless, unless you all get up and support people like Peter and Peter Cashman and everybody else and actually communicate to your politicians and say, this is enough. The laws that I have tried to get through, through Bill Heffernan, by the way, are going to fail. And once they fail, that's it. Who God knows when this is going to come up again. So please, I beg of you, if you are interested in a fair system, if you are interested in equity, if you're interested in helping farmers and the scientists who really care about producing effective uh, therapies and cures, please get in touch with your politician and support the Patent Amendment Human Genes and Biological Materials Bill 2010. Thank you.